When we heard the planes approach from the distance, Avo yelled in Armenian, you guys come out, the planes. He couldn't finish his sentence. We heard the first bomb explode near the bridge. I slid behind a curtain that smelled of mildew and urine. I didn't want to come out. The stained windows rattled. During hide and seek, they always targeted me first. I didn't want to be found. Come out, Avo yelled. I'm not playing anymore. No one moved. In this abandoned house of worship, all five of us found a corner. Allah will protect us, I thought. Bombs won't destroy a minaret. Avo kept begging, guys, come out, please. It's not funny anymore. No one moved. The explosion set off sirens and car alarms. Allah is with us. Allah is with us. The mosque was our hiding place, even though I was a good Christian boy. The final explosion silenced everything, even Avo's voice. To kill correctly takes calculation down to a science, arsenic, cocodylic acid, no water and rice on a cellular level. Make sure no surviving seed can be collected and planted because even a small seed assures survival because mortars, grenades, and bombs cannot destroy a grain because our heart is made of seeds. Know what it takes to kill the seeds. Know what it takes to deprive the plant of water, to dehydrate it, to be surrounded by love, but unable to absorb it. How can I convince you that you do have chlorophyll, that you can take the sun's energy and turn it into sugar, produce something sweet inside of you, take the waste people breathe out and make it into something that will keep you alive, that will keep those around you alive, create oxygen. Why do you say that this metaphor doesn't work, that you don't have the powers of a plant that nature didn't intend you that way. Look how you twist and turn towards the light. I'm tired of this life. It's just not sustainable. I'm not meant to be a potted plant in a barn stall cubicle. My kind of crazy needs flexibility. I'm splendid in small bursts, calls and chats and emails and pings. I'm a fucking pleasure. But 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, and the veil starts to wear thin. Medicated and stressed behind this leaking barricade is a tsunami of absurdity, and I'm running out of fucks to fortify. I keep it brief to limit the residue of madness seeping through the gaps in reason because they're starting to notice the flavor of my anxiety. My lunacy is like a ferocious beast that can be momentarily pacified, but I'm running out of treats. Esoteric and eclectic, my dement is like an overloaded suitcase that I'm straddling, trying to latch, and I'm late for the last flight out of this war-torn town. My mania is like a shit-smelling boulder chained to my ankle and I drag it around and people smile like it's an ordinary day. Shut up, Tina. Stop talking. No one is going to pay you to be you. Don't create, don't donate, don't opinionate. Just give them the facts, smile and nod. Keep your head down, do the fucking job. And for all that is good and nerdy, shut the fuck up.
what her son knows. He knows she needs him like parched throat, craves last drops of water. She is cleaved, a mother needs her son this way, the way a hummingbird circles the bird of paradise, the way the marathon runner sprints the last 10 yards. Knowing what is at stake towards boldest cheekbones, melting smile, lashes circling, crinkly dark eyes that hold her heart gently, he knows without saying her need that will only disappear when she dies. And even then he is named for two angels. And the knowing cloaks him as if wrapped in fleece, an awning, an oasis. A lighthouse guides him as he slowly sails away. When there is no well, land is parched, mouth dusty, skin cracked, bloody fingers plant thornless roses. Mothers who carry their own water are viewed with discomfort. Curtains of words fall. I don't know what to say. Time heals all. Whispers trail behind like tales, a reminder of what could happen to them. Mothers who carry their own water live through, in, under, around the death of their children. How? They never ask why. Lean on winds of change. Find warmth in cold places. Push through survival to thrive. Move beyond black and white. Traverse shades of gray. Refuse to stay stuck in grave. Dig deep for well inside. To love, you say, it will happen on its own, like drops of rain making a map on the window, or a baby suddenly aware of its hands, exploring the freedom of a fist. Know that even as you read this, you are envied by the Troya, which, if it could think, could believe that we can touch each other without pain. I won't lie. You cut the San Pedro, boiled it into a soup, strained the needles from the meat, and you called it medicine. We drove for hours, and I recalled reading how in 300 years, if it's left untouched, the cactus will finally show its bones. We drank at noon. The sun eyeballed us with suspicion, knowing we have so much more choice in how we rise and fall. I felt nothing but jealousy for the falcon, that talking spirit that would not abandon the sky, committed four hours to tracing its name on the open palm of blue so someone would know it was there. And we do the same. I counted the plastic bottles John collected along the trail as we set up camp. Things the land could not take back, like regret. Sometimes voice is not enough. Sometimes a word falls from us like a boulder and rolls unnoticed until it is dust. I must say I tried. I felt nothing but the fingers of the evening resting on my cheeks, the needles catching on my heel and staying like the ghost of a bog. You left us in the circle around the camp where the cacti danced and died, shaking their skeletal knees at the mountain. What stories did it have to tell? Nothing quite like your move to La Paz. How in leaving, you thought you would never see Phaedra again. How you loved her without knowing her, and then she was gone. That memory still moist on your lips. You met a friend of a friend during an uprising, and you found her in a city full of 4,000. You locked eyes, you kissed. You exchanged numbers but never called her. That opportunity missed like a train being swallowed into a deep winter sunset.